You love a funny girl? I'm a comedian. Woo! Woo. <laughs> Who was your first crush? And now he's gay. Yeah. So, plot twist. Plot twist. I also had like five glasses of wine that dinner. Bob. Yeah. What do you feel in that moment? You're like, my heart's just racing. I feel like I can't breathe. And I was like, bitch, that's anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> fun fact. Fun fact. That's where the magic is. It's at uh-huh. the bench. Cool. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into oh. it. Ramble. Basic. Thank you to Rosetta Stone, Macy's, and Grammarly for sponsoring this episode of Pretty Basic. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Pretty Basic. Today you only have one half of, you know, the co-host. I am uh, your co-host, Alicia Marie, um, but I'm not alone today. And if you're watching the YouTube video, go watch it. Um, I tried with my fit today. It looks really good. Does it? I and didn't, actually, I, I didn't. just it, I just put together that your eyeshadow matches <gasps> your top, and it oh looks God, really good. Thank you. It's I like it a lot. Uh-huh. I like your fit too. It brings out your your eyes. Thank you so much. This is um, they're yours. <laughs> what the whole fit? The shirt and the pants. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! So I spent the night last night and was just like, yeah. I thought that literally looks like your entire fit. That's hilarious. Well, I I, found, I picked pieces that felt like me. Well, if you couldn't tell um, by her voice, <laughs> we have my lovely sister here, Ash yes. Nicole. Hi. Woo! Woo! <laughs> my lovely- oh, I appreciate our, that, thank you. <laughs> our live audience of one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just the quiet, like, woo! <laughs> Oh my God. So Rem and I decided that we wanted to do sibling episode. I always That's say so sibling, fun. sibling. You do, yeah. Sibling. There's words like that that I always just say wrong and I- I, it's not that I don't try to say it right. It's just wired What's in my funny brain. is you're adding a syllable. To sibling. Yeah. Sibling. Sibling. To me, sibling feels harder to say than sibling. I, mean, I disagree, but. <laughs> <laughs> sure, no, I get sure, it. Sure. I get it. I feel like most people know, but also a lot of people don't know. I think that's one thing about the internet because mm-hmm. we have different platforms. We both have different stuff. And I assume people have watched us from day one when we started literally years ago. Right. Um, back when people thought we were partners. Right. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> Which, One of Alicia and uh, mine's goal for so many years was to make it very clear that we weren't lesbian lovers. Uh, you know, <laughs> like we were I, like, no, that's my sister. Let's make that clear. I, I get it. To so, the point where like they obviously knew who you were in my vlogs and I would still say my sister Alicia because I had a habit of doing that. Oh no, we constantly, I mean, all growing up, no one ever thought we looked alike, which yeah. I don't think we do either. There's certain times in photos or angles where I see us have the, a similar smile, or if you just or hear- Or a laugh. Or, or I was gonna say, or if you hear us laugh, yeah. we have a very, very similar laugh. Yeah. Um, but all of this to say, I forget that some people don't know- Correct. That we're sisters. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us about yourself, Ash, my, my three years older than me sister. What do we wanna, what do we wanna know? I don't know. Just like, like what, what's your vibe? How's it been ever since you moved out? Oh, the move out has been quite the experience. I think something that I've always wanted to, and especially because I'm like, I'm 33 now, for those of you that don't know, something that I've always wanted to experience was living alone because Alicia and I obviously lived together our whole lives, moved out together, like did college together. And then when we moved to LA, Alicia bought her house and I moved into her house for the past six years. Five, five, six years. Seven. Seven years. So in the back of my mind, I'm like, I, I feel like I've done so much of life, but I haven't actually experienced the like independence that comes with living on your own or having your own place. And I just always wanted to try it. So I was so excited, moved out in October and it was such a hard thing for me. <laughs> and I don't think I was prepared slash even like I was so blindsided by how hard it was. And I think I was actually like looking back, I think I was homesick Mm. because I had so many people. I talked about it a lot on my vlog channel. I had so many people commenting, being like, I had the same thing happen to me, but I moved for college. I had the same thing happen to me, but I I moved States for work and they were homesick. And they were like, I think that's the exact same thing. And the more I thought about it, I was like, yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. So it's, it's been hard. It was hard in the beginning. It's definitely getting better now. Yeah. Um, and I've been really good. I think the whole thing has been about like finding my routine and finding those things to make my place feel more homey. What's crazy again, for those of you who do not know, but we've always lived together. Like we we never have not lived together until this past, the past 
Six months almost. I know, almost six Wait, months. Wait, no, yes. October, December, January, February, March. Yeah. Yes, six We're months. exactly six months from October. That is Because that's when my lease is up and I have been thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm getting out. Um, oh my God. I want to dive into all of that, but also I want to do some of these icebreaker questions. Oh, we have so much time. Let's do the icebreaker. Okay, okay, right. I like, I was trying to find fun questions we could do. And I sent them to Rem too, because I was like, oh my gosh, you and um, Shane should also do yeah. the same questions. Yeah, you just yeah. hear a different perspective on them for sure um i'll probably jump around in well case. especially because is rim older yeah rim's older yeah. and that's how you guys bond right because there's times where she'll be i don't know why i second guess myself because we have talked about that multiple yes. times but there's times where we're like you guys need to do an episode together and talk about older siblings, older siblings yeah and then me and shane need to do an episode together because <laughs> there's things where i'm like Hee -hee -hee. or we have you have both of us on and we'll have the little siblings on one side and the older siblings on i one told side. rim i was like you and ashley do an episode and y'all can just roast me like i give you permission <laughs> to just roast the shit out of me careful um no, I know. People are like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I should be careful. Okay. Who was your first crush? Um, or what do you mean first? Like first ever, ever? It, everyone loves a good cr crush story. Um, <laughs> Plus, if it's Jonathan Taylor Thomas or Joey Lawrence, you can laugh about the 90s together. Oh, my God. I <laughs> thought we were talking about, like, in real life, like, people. No, like, any. Uh, any yeah, I would say Jonathan Taylor Thomas was definitely one of them. He, his voice in Lion King too. Oh my God. <laughs> he's like a kid. I was like, God, he's so cute. But I, he was my age or I think he was like two years older than me. He was one of the nineties. Yeah. yeah. He was the, the voice of young. Yeah. Like baby Simba. Baby Simba. Other one was Matthew Broderick. Did you know that? No. Inspector got, he was one of my biggest crushes. Oh my God. Also get, he's been with, what's her name for yes. so long. Who's he married to? He's married to Sex and City Girl. Yes, uh, Jessica, uh, Sarah Jessica Sarah Parker. Jessica Parker for so long. No, yes. Good on them. That's Good amazing. On them. Also, again, Inspector Gadget. Oh, I never knew I could. Da -da -da -da. What's up with me? Oh my God, what's up with me having crushes? Alicia on was. I don't think we even realized how obsessed she was with Inspector Gadget. We she had she would wear the trench. She would pull out scissors mm -hmm. from her pocket and be like, "Oh, do you need these?" And I'd be I like, had no. my briefcase. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'd be like, I would make like little mazes for me. We to had have to those. Out. We had that. Like a lot of older people had them. Like one of those like mechanical <gasps> claws yes. to like reach cans from the top shelf, and she would put it in her sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> and it would like take the place of her hand and I, I would like ask her something and she'd reach out her claw <laughs> <laughs> I would. do you remember when the happy meal at mcdonald's had the inspector yeah. gadget that you you had to get like one one thing was his arm one was like it was like head, a touch on and you yeah. had to like build the build my whole body. goal oh my god i should buy it for myself just for childhood and nostalgia <laughs> i wanted it so bad i would yeah. beg mom to take us i'd be like yeah. please 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 and i would beg you to like give me your toy yeah <laughs> she'd be like i'll trade you this I'll be like, I'll trade you another arm. And you're like, no, I don't want that. I don't need an arm. Oh my God. Happy Meals used to be so Happy cool. Happy Meals were great. They're like weird now. I just feel like the toys were were good. Yeah, I got but, I got a Britney Spears NSYNC CD in a Happy Meal once. And that yes. was the best day of my life. The best Happy Meal gift ever. Gift? Toy. Toy prize. Toy prize was, I remember you got a, it was this orange CD. It had black on it. Half of the CD was NSYNC. The other half was Britney Spears. Which is incredible if you stop and think about it. Stop and think about it. That's basically them giving you what? I think it was like three songs each. So like six iTunes songs, but like top, top 10 oh, songs. And we grew up in a very like Christian household. So we weren't really allowed to have secular music. Oh, like I that. held on to that <laughs> CD for dear life. Well, I remember mom's- I would blast it. <laughs> oh, I remember um, we would play it because we just were so excited to like have Britney, Britney Spears it music. Britney. I lo I've loved her ever since then. Uh -huh. um, and I remember for Oops, I Did It Again, we'd be singing it and mom was like, okay, but I want you to say I am that innocent <laughs> <laughs> instead of I'm not that innocent. She would get mad at us. She and would, I had a huge crush, crush on Lance at the time. No one knew Justin was going to be the best. one that came out like being like the biggest one out of yes. the whole group. But at the time, Lance was the hot one. And now he's gay. Yeah. So, plot twist. Plot twist. It could have, it little have Ashley, been me. Little Ashley was sad. She's sad. No, I'm happy he's happy. He's happy. But also, <laughs> as a kid, I was supposed to end up with him. So, Oh, my God. <laughs> if you could go back in time, would you change what you wore to prom? A thousand percent. <laughs> I, you, I feel like you had great prom fits. Uh, I looked awful. 
I looked so bad. I did. I feel like I had a very, I didn't really have vision <laughs> for myself at that time and neither did my mom. So I, we would just kind of like shoot or shot. And then my, like my budget for my dress was a hundred dollars. And I remember going to, I think it was Macy's. Hell yeah. Macy's. I think it was Macy's and, um, picking out my dresses and like trying to find one that was perfectly like at a hundred was tough. You know what? I think it is more than that. I truly think back then you didn't have prom, like styles. No. Prom back then, no offense. You're three older than me. Prom way back then. <laughs> I, I just feel like say. styles changed so they much. They did. Like you were the epit the prime of the tight curls, mm -hmm. like the half up tight curls, maybe some baby's breath yeah. in your hair. The prom dresses that were just like a Tool. satin. Yeah, it was just like the flip over yeah. and straight. Like I feel like, especially now, oh my God, there's gowns for prom. Oh my God. And I, I feel like, I yeah, I mean, I completely agree. And I, I feel like this is what people say about all their generations. Like, I feel like I got it <laughs> like right at the rough, mm -hmm. the roughest time. Um, but yeah, both my dresses sucked and then both of my hair styles sucked, but I, I felt great. Oh, you looked stunning. I thought I was gorgeous. I liked the blue one. I liked the red one too. Like the one. I didn't like I liked hair. the red one better, but like both sucked. My prom wasn't Yours that much. Is great. Mine were okay. I think junior year, um, I have, I've had this fear my entire life of accidentally like matching someone. Here's the thing, like when Rem and I match, on the pod like that's cute and funny to me but yeah. if it was like prom my biggest fear was i would show up in the same dress as someone else and that i feel like that happens in every single class wait can we talk about this what i feel like that's a fear that most a lot of people have totally oh i feel like that's a thing that's like a women thing why or maybe that's a me thing do you think it's just a movie thing so here's what i would like to wonder i would love to discuss if like if that's something that people constantly think about because every event every party um uh, like wedding, whatever, I'm constantly trying to stand out and look different. And I feel like I do that with my hairstyles. And if people like, if we come out and, and like, let's pretend me, you walk out of the room and we're both wearing the same thing, I will change. And it's, it has nothing to do with you. I cannot look like someone else. So here's the thing. I, see, I thought that was normal too, probably because we lived together, but then I became friends with Remy and she was like, oh my God, I think that's so funny. So like, I became care. friends with Taryn and she <laughs> was like, that's not a big deal. And I was like, that's a like, they like deal. it. Yeah. And, but so I think it's a us problem. Yeah. I think it's an us problem too. <laughs> but again, didn't notice that until like we, I thought it was just like a, no one wanted to match for thing. Me, for me, it's like bigger situations like prom. And I was so paranoid. Mm-hmm especially again, now I feel like you can get dresses from anywhere. Right. It's easier to get right. them online before you only went to Windsor. Yeah. Like I Macy's. remember going to Ontario mills, yeah, Ontario the outlet mall. Mills. Yeah. And we would go to like the, the, the three stores where you could get prom dresses. Yeah. So you were almost guaranteed you would match someone. Or I also remember certain schools had like kind of like registry things. And like, it would say, when they, when you were at checkout, they would say, oh, so-and-so from this high school bought it. What? Yeah. i that, my friends who went, my friends went to public school because they went to public school while I went to, um, you know, a small little, my, our graduating classes had like 40 people. Yeah. It was, it was not great. It's so sad. Yeah. Anyways, I was so paranoid that I would look, have the same dress. Which makes more sense if you had a smaller group of people, like yeah. everyone would see your, literally your entire class would see your dress. That's, yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yuka, our friend who lives in Japan, I remember for her prom, because she was in, in your grade, mm -hmm. she got it like custom made in Tokyo. And she, she was, was beautiful. Like, she looks stunning. She looks stunning. She looks stunning. She looks like a little Hawaiian princess. Yeah, she looks beautiful. Yeah. It was so pretty. It was, was like, like this like uh, orange, pink, kind of sherbet color. Yeah. And she looked like like a flower, like a Hawaiian flower. A literal goddess. Yeah. And she was saying it was so And I so was over cheap. there next to her like, dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Her photo. Um, but she got hers made in Tokyo and she was like, oh yeah, it's super cheap and it was custom. Yeah. So she helped me for my junior year. So jealous. And no, 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 no. But like, look what I chose. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, was at it? the time, like hot pink and black was kind of like was a vibe. It was this like, th I just recently got rid of it because it was in the garage <sighs> for the longest have. time. And I was like, I was just like, what am I going to do with it? Right. Three tier pink sparkly had a huge black bow it literally reminded there was no zebra but it was giving the hot pink black theme and then i had these really cute heels that had hearts the heels were cute the, i remember thinking the heels were so the heel cute. was a heart yeah and it was really cute um the next year i did a similar thing where i got it made overseas because mm -hmm. i was like i, I well, you started it. a thing now and gotta yeah. see it through but then um yeah i i went with like a an off-white color and i it kind of was giving kind of yellow <sighs> 
<laughs> I thought it was yellow, not off white. Well, so it, I it said it was like a, a cream color. Yeah, it definitely came out yellow. yellow. Yeah, it's fine. Um, but like def- a pale yellow. Yeah, I think it just well, more so. Um, it was giving wedding. Mm. When I wish I did more of a fun color. Okay, but did you see me for my middle school graduation? <laughs> I was in a white dress with <laughs> curls and you baby's looked breath. So I literally different. looked like a little, like I was trying to go to a wedding. Like I was trying to get married. That's okay. I hated it. It was a time. It was a time. Anyways, let us know what your prom dresses were <laughs> slash are. And if you can take advice from us, don't go too trendy. Um, what other advice? Don't do the super tight curls. Don't do the tight curls. Don't do that to yourself. I feel like less is more. I remember in high school, people like adults would be like, yeah, prom's overrated, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Obviously we have these movies that we look up to and it's like, well, the movies make it look amazing. Everyone's losing their virginity. Like it's like a whole like drinking. Yes. Crazy thing. Right. Again, private Christian school. (laughs) Yeah. But also realistically, you're like 17, 18. No, yeah. You're so young. How are you? You don't like drinking is getting away with drinking at prom. Oh, they had rulers. It's crazy. At, like all of yeah. our, like if you're doing it outside things. of prom, that's one thing, but like at prom, like yeah, that's wild. Like spiking the punch. Yeah. That never like happened that, for How us. do you do that? You can't, the yeah. teachers are watching it like crazy. Well, ours, I feel like other schools didn't care. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> one of my biggest regrets in my life is that I never kept up learning Spanish when I was taking it in school. I took three years and I feel like I really don't have much to show for it. Honestly, one of my goals in life is to be able to say that I'm bilingual. I mean, I mean, I have to be perfect at it, but definitely enough to understand and have a conversation with someone, especially with how much I travel. I feel like this, there's just been times where knowing another language is one of the biggest powers you can have in this world. So when Rosetta Stone wanted to partner with our podcast, I got really excited because I felt like, you know what, this is finally my time. If you don't know what Rosetta Stone is, they are literally the expert in language learning for over 30 years, and they have an award-winning app where you can learn anytime, anywhere. The best part is there's 25 languages, so I personally really want to learn Spanish, but they have 25 languages from Spanish, French, Italian, German, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, Dutch, Arabic, Polish. The best part is that it's in bite-sized pieces, so you can learn and actually make real progress in as little as 10 minutes a day. Like, we all have 10 minutes a day. It really prepares you for life. It goes beyond just vocab and it focuses on speaking practice, pronunciation with their true accent feature and so much more. It's super immersive and intuitive with learning. There's no tedious memorization needed. Unlike my high school where I just memorized stuff and quickly forgot it after the test. Like I said, I really do think this would come so in handy for me just with traveling and stuff or maybe maybe you're wanting to connect with a loved one or maybe you're just wanting to pick up a new skill and keep your brain sharp. For a limited time, our listeners can get Rosetta Stone's Lifetime Unlimited subscription, which gives you access to all 25 of their languages forever. For 40% off, visit rosettastone.com slash basic today. Rosetta Stone, how language is learned. Here at Pretty Basic, we love giving back, and that is one of the huge reasons why we love Macy's as a partner to this show. We love how much they're also wanting to give back, and they have so many philanthropic initiatives that they do throughout the entire year. And one of those things is that Macy's is committed to supporting college access and better student outcomes. I think we can all agree that this is extremely important. Throughout May, join Macy's in celebrating Asian American and Pacific Islander AAPI Heritage Month by supporting APIA scholars, whose mission is to equip AAPI young adults with the resources they need to succeed in higher education and beyond. Just round up your next in-store purchase or donate online to APIA scholars. Shop AAPI-owned products and learn more at Macy's.com slash purpose. But recently I saw TikTok and it totally reminded me of how it was saying, if you really think about it, prom is so weird because they're just a whole bunch of like, you're just sober and you're all dancing. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's kind of weird. Like when you really think I about really it. I really think that my fear, if you guys don't know, I have a fear of dancing. I really think my fear of dancing came from that dances like that, probably prom. Just because I was so in my head the whole time and I didn't know how to dance. So I was just like copying people and then hoping I was doing it right. You know, so I think I was just so in my head because I was so sober that it became a thing. But also then you didn't know the difference of being drunk dancing and sober dancing. Yeah, I know. But if I wasn't overthinking it, I probably would have had more fun. Can you talk about your fear of dancing more? Because I know people relate. Yeah. So (laughs) I talk about this on my podcast all the time. So I've gotten it down. I've gotten it down. um, The whole spiel. I have my entire life had a really hard time dancing in public. And if I have enough drinks, not too many drinks, there's like a sweet spot of like, we're on my third drink possibly. And I'm like feeling good. That's the perfect way to get me to go like dancing. But I'm also at an age where I don't like drinking really anymore. 
like it makes me feel gross. I feel bloated. Like it doesn't, it doesn't feel worth it to me. So it takes a lot for me to actually go out dancing. And what I have found to be really frustrating is people talk a lot about their struggles, like anxiety, like mental health, things that they struggle with. And I'm not in any way comparing the two, but my burden is definitely dancing in public. And it is a fear that I have. And no one takes it seriously. Mm. Literally no one. Every friend that I have will like try, will like tell people about it jokingly. And I'll be like, cool. I have done that once Thanks. or twice. Now I'm overthinking <laughs> them, overthinking me, you yeah. know, or I'll have friends that'll like push me in the middle of a dance circle and I want to die. <laughs> like it's not helpful. And I know they don't understand because it is a silly fear when compared to other things, but it is something that has been such a huge part of my life ever since prom, I which is crazy. What's probably hard though, is something like dancing when you don't do it on the regular, you're not going out to the club all the time or whatever. You don't really, I feel like now you're in your wedding era. So now I feel like you're constantly around, like that's something you can avoid for so long, but I feel like there's certain situations right. where you're like, you're kind of stuck like a wedding or something and you don't want to just sit the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. I was actually at a wedding, uh, in Africa in, uh, just a couple months ago. And I remember I had a horrible stomach flu, like a legit stomach <laughs> flu. Like I was in pain the whole wedding, like the whole wedding day. I was like running to the bathroom because my stomach hurt so bad. Um, I remember being low key grateful that I didn't have to dance <laughs> and I was in pain. Like I yeah. was in like, I, I would have much, most people would have been like, Oh, at least, you know, you're in pain. Like I'd much rather be able to like drink or whatever. Nope. I was like, well, this is the one thing that's getting me out of <laughs> dancing later. So that's how much it's become a thing in my life, which is crazy. It's so funny though, because you have so much rhythm. The way I love to brag about you is that you're an amazing drummer and you're so much mm -hmm. better than you think. I, but it's, that's what I mean. It's like a mental block. So, but with dancing, it's just weird because most people who can't dance just don't have rhythm. Poor things. They're just like, they're right. offbeat, like whatever. And I know so many people who will go out and just like tear it up on the dance floor. It looks awful, but like they're doing it and that looks fun. Totally. And I wish I could do that. But I also feel like growing up, we had the idea of, oh, like, I don't know how to dance. Because back in the day, you had to know like there were waltzes moves. and steps and like actual dancing. And now mm. dancing is just, you just literally stand there and like bop. Yeah. Which I've gotten better at like, I'll, I'll try my best to bop. But if I, if, again, if I haven't had like, if I'm not drinks. in a good mood or if I, if I haven't had a, at least a drink, I'm probably not going to bop. And then I look super awkward. So then I'm trying to bop just to not look <laughs> awkward. And it's just becoming this whole thing in my head and it's frustrating, <laughs> but I actually looked it up and there's so many people that talk about it, that of it being a real fear. I forget the actual no, name, let me look it up. but I watched a YouTube video about it about a guy trying to get over his fear of dancing. And he slowly but surely like made himself like go out there. He would go to a club and just stand there. <laughs> Did that help? I mean, he slowly got himself on the dance floor. So props to him. Chorophobia, I, which makes sense. Cause like choreography. Choreography, yeah. Choreophobia. Choreophobia. The Choreo. fear of dancing is a real thing. Yes. So anyways, long story short, it's something I've struggled with and it's something that I still feel like most people in my life don't understand. Can I say something? Yeah. This says causes of chorophobia. Fear of dancing could be explained by a person's upbringing. If a person has been brought up in a strict household um, and has been prohibited from dancing or religious organizations may prohibit the practice of dancing. Ooh, <laughs> let's get Ooh. into it. Okay. <laughs> Ariella Storia. I saw it. You sent it to me. I sent it to you just posted something recently and I could not relate to it more. I thought it was the most beautiful thing. And she's really talented at like uh, spoken word and poetry mm -hmm. and like just writing in general. And she does a lot of like modeling and uh, body positivity and writing. Mm -hmm. So it's like a mixture of all of these things, but she's also like grew up in the church and she did this whole kind of monologue on Beyonce's song, Church Girl. Oh, I love that song. And then on top of that, at the same time, I someone else posted, and I can't remember who it was, so I can't shout them out, unfortunately. But someone else posted something very similar. And both of them said the exact same thing, that growing up in the church caused them to hate their bodies. And I never related to anything more because ever since I was little, like, not only did my parents and my school and my church and essentially all that together, God say that like being sexual in any way was a sin, but it was my responsibility to keep the guys from sinning. Mm. Oh my, don't get me started. What I wore 
Don't make your brother cause your brother to stumble. (laughs) Bullshit. It was so stupid. And the more that I think about it, I'm like, oh my God. Like I was not only told that, um, that I'm a sinner and I need to repent and all of this Mm -hmm. stuff, but now I'm carrying not only my own responsibility, but the responsibility of every boy in my class, Mm -hmm. which is crazy. And I'm sorry. And what's more sexual than like dancing and letting your body move, you know? If guys get off on seeing shoulders, that's a them problem. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Some of like sexiness isn't what you're wearing. It's how you, it's it's how you act. Mm -hmm. Someone could be full, like, like someone I could be in a full on turtleneck. You could be in a full on turtleneck and still like be exuding like sexual energy. Well, I remember even being, um, I won't say names obviously, but um, I remember being somewhere with like family friends and church members. And it was, I'm pretty sure it was like a church luncheon or something. And I had a shirt on that was too tight. It wasn't showing any cleavage. And I remember being like, I'm going to wear this because it's church and it wasn't showing anything. And it felt, oh, it uh, felt like respectful, you know, for church, um, which is a big deal. Cause I was like, 11. Yeah. No, you were young, <laughs> you know? And I remember one of my friend's dad's coming up and telling me that my shirt was too tight, which I also saw a TikTok <laughs> that said, if you're an adult, if you're a grown man, if you're a father, if you are a grown male adult yeah, and you're noticing an 11 year old's boobs, you have the fucking problem, I w- which I like, didn't you even have the problem. think about well, that until probably you? three years ago when I was like, why in when the I hell you the TikTok. did he <laughs> tell me that? Like no. why, w- if he was really concerned, like he should have told my mom or he should have told his wife to tell me or, yeah. you know, it shouldn't have been him. It's really weird and uncomfortable when you sit and think about it. And I think a lot of these things have led to me being very aware aware of my body at all times but especially dancing and also because I didn't grow up dancing a lot of people had like middle school dances yeah I didn't have any of that I also think that's where you got the shit into the stick and I will say even mom hearing that situation I remember her being pissed right so yeah. well, like I never told her so well yeah but even not my mom's yeah, fault yeah 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 um, love you, mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but even, I feel like that's where you got the shit into the stick because you had to deal with that stuff. But then by the time I, cause I'm only three years younger than you, but by the time right. I, you know, I think our age from 89 to 93, I think was a very transformative. Well, three years or it's a it's good a amount lot. of time. Yeah. But even styles and trends, like I remember telling mom, like, um, you know, like when, when shorts were like a little short or like I wanted to wear like a skirt with boots. I remember her being like, oh, are those too like old and mature? Yeah. And she's like, oh no, I think they're just the style now. Like it was just, I think I got your hand-me-downs obviously, one. Two, you developed way faster. Like yeah. you had boobs when like what, sixth grade? Yeah. Like most girl, I mean, most of my friends growing up didn't even get them till like high school. Yeah. Well, I also got my period at, at sixth grade and I, it, I thought that was normal because I had other friends doing it. But then the more that I talked to people, a lot of people didn't get it till high school. So everyone's different, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. I started at the end of sixth grade and it was a horror moment for me. Yeah. I remember <laughs> I remember having to tell my mom, she's like, how's your day? I was like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to talk. And she's like, anything interesting happened? And I was like, I just don't remember. Side note, <laughs> I remember talking to my sixth grade teacher like years later and we were talking about something and she mentioned something about like hormonal kids in her class <laughs> and I was like oh yeah like I remember starting I started my period in your grade and she goes I remember and I was like I never Are told you, you and she goes oh I can tell when the girls start their period she was like it's so obvious and I was like I bet also you think you're being sliby like right I need to go to the bathroom and you're like you're sticking <laughs> yeah. a pad in your yeah. you're like sleep. sneakily trying to like hide a, a tampon or a pad in your pocket yeah <laughs> so funny what's funny is it was a pad oh of course which is the most noisiest like big awkward yeah Anyways. Oh my God. So funny. All of this to say, I think it's very interesting how a lot of people have struggled with the insane amount of pressure of purity culture Mm -hmm. and, you know, people who were brought up in the church and just all of that, that comes with it. Um, cause now those once kids are now in their late twenties and Mm thirties. And it's just interesting because I do feel like there was that extra wave. Like I remember going to all girl chapels every like year, there was like that special one. And then Mm -hmm. the boys would literally just go play dodgeball Yeah, (laughs) while the girls like had to sit and talk about like how making out's horrible. Your body's a sanctuary and, um, again, don't make them stumble. You're showing too much cleavage. You have the responsibility, blah, blah, blah. Oh, but Beyonce wrote Church Girl for, oh, I should just play it because she speaks it way more eloquently yeah. and beautifully. Beyonce wrote Church Girl for me. Well, maybe not specifically, but for those of us still trying to get free, I wonder how she knew we needed an anthem 
or even more so a reminder. Most of us in our 30s and 40s and still learning it ain't so much a sin to shake something or to be something worth looking at. You're I have to pause that. That is not a sin to be something worth looking at. Right. And like we are beautiful. Like, yeah. Even like holding yourself to a higher standard and thinking yourself as beautiful was a sin. Yeah. Was viewed or, as or like vain. As vain. Uh, yeah. Like you shouldn't try to like. Yeah. I love looks. dressing up. Looks. <laughs> looks. Like being into yourself or into your looks or dressing yourself up in a is certain a type sin way in is shallow and sinful. And keep in and mind. And vanity. I, disclaimer with this too. I'm very aware that not all like churches are like, this is just right. the way that we grew up. Like yes. I feel like it was just more of an extreme way. I don't, I'm like, I'm very aware that like, mm -hmm. that's people twisting what God right. stands for. hundred percent. You know, yes. yes. But, <laughs> but, but also back it. to our trauma. <laughs> back to trauma. Um, anyways, you guys should go listen to the whole thing, but yeah. obviously Beyonce. Give her a follow too. She's like the most positive person on socials. It's, yeah. it's so refreshing to see her content, but it, couldn't relate more <sighs> immediately like after i listened to the whole thing immediately sent it to alicia yeah. i was like this is unreal my favorite thing is when we send each other christian like yeah um things of like like if ever you send me something that is church related it's one of those things that i'll like wait until i have a moment to like fully yeah listen and watch because i want to like soak it all in and usually it's stuff being like my trauma from the church <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or whatever and yeah. again this is just our experience imo in my opinion 100 um but that makes sense. I always have thought that for a while. I remember telling you a few years ago, I was like, I think that's where your stem of fear of dancing comes from. Yeah. Because I versus think so I did like cheer and stuff for years. So for me, even though I was stiff as fuck, I was still like sexy, being yeah. like stiff as fuck. Right, you know? right, right. Um, and In then I've just always loved dancing. But I think because of that, it forced me to like, you know, just get comfortable with it. Right, right. Um, I've actually really thought about not telling anyone because I wouldn't want anyone there. And going and taking a dance class, like, no, but you, like not, not like a dance class, like taking dance classes, like making it part of my like workout routine where I go once a week and I do my dance class just to get me more comfortable with moving. But it's so funny because you can move. No, I know. You have but the it rhythm. shouldn't take alcohol to get me to do it. No, it shouldn't. But even then, even when you have been drunk in the past, you still don't want to dance. Like it's right. like, it, it really is a fear. Yeah. And I, I think it took me a long time Cause I thought you just didn't, and that's most dancing. Like people are just like, no, I'm nervous. But right. it took me a long time to realize there's like it's nervous, an actual. And then there's like, oh, she's shutting down. You know what it was? I was, I remember trying to, real, I was like, okay, like, what do you feel in that moment? And you're like, my heart's just racing. I feel like I can't breathe. And I was like, bitch, that's anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's straight up. Well, I remember that conversation. I remember being like, oh, cause I never thought I had anxiety mm. until you said, until I explained how it felt. And you were like, that's how I feel about other things. I was like, want some meds? I, like, I didn't, <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. And I remember being like, oh my God, like I think that's how serious this actually is. And then that's when I started, I would talk to people about it. I talked to my therapist about it and it like all, we were like, okay, there's way yeah. more here than Cause it's not just about, about other people's thoughts and mm -hmm. opinions of it. No, it's, that's definitely part of it, yeah. but it's nowhere near like the other, the same yeah. amount as the other part. Oh, well, let us know your church trauma in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> or if you have a fear of dancing, because I feel yeah. like I'm, I don't know anyone else in my life that has it. So it'd be great to see like, I have that too, mm -hmm. you know? No. Yeah. I know there's other people and they're going to feel so hurt thousand right percent now. is. I just don't know of anybody. So I'm that'd just be thinking nice. of you doing like yoga and stuff and you're so good with moving. Like you can move. Right. I know I can. I know. So, I mean- I would support you going to a dance class if you want. I think mm -hmm. you'd be so shocked because you're going to be so good. <laughs> you're going to be like, wait, guys, look. And I'm like, where's that been like the past 33 years? We go, my like next like friend's wedding, I just go like tear it up in the middle of the wait, dance floor. I, okay, we can plan it. I'll push you in the dance circle and then you just break it. Yeah, like, and I'll just be like, no. And then I just Like, no, snap, I could never. Snap into place. <laughs> Bend and snap. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Well, so much for quick questions. Quick questions. But I Q loved this combo yeah, anyway. Tangent. Okay, I was a pretty good student when it came to me in school. The one thing I absolutely sucked at and still suck at is grammar. I don't know what is not clicking for me. I I don't I truly don't know. Um but I am a proud user of Grammarly. We've talked about it on the pod before, but seriously, I wish I wish I wish I wish with all my heart I had this tool to use when I was in high school, when I was writing essays. Like the pressure of college finals alone 
I hated it. Seriously, I cannot stress it enough. Use Grammarly to help you finish this semester strong. If you're in school, do not let final season stress you out. It is a very stressful time. Grammarly is the AI-powered writing assistant that lets you write with confidence. So whether you're tackling capstone projects, thesis papers, or just lengthy essays, you'll be clicking submit without breaking a sweat. Grammarly is a must-have for every student, and it's free to download. It works on all your favorite devices and apps. The free version of Grammarly offers comprehensive writing suggestions and a double-click synonym feature. Or I highly, highly suggest getting the Grammarly Premium because it comes with advanced features like clarity full sentence rewrites. Basically, it flags and rephrases hard to read sentences, cutting down on all the jargon and making your writing easier to read. And the best part is Premium even comes with plagiarism detection because the last thing that you want is to get caught looking like you plagiarized when you actually didn't. From essays and projects to emails and presentations, use Grammarly to write with confidence and improve your grades this semester. Sign up for an account today at Grammarly.com slash basic and get 20% off when you're ready to upgrade to Grammarly Premium. That's G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash basic. Oh, what's been the best day of your life so far? That's a good question. Uh, it wasn't when I was born. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> no, that was the worst day. Relax. I specifically remember the day Alicia was born and I'm actually going to say it because, um, I remember I was playing Play-Doh at my friend's house and then my dad came and picked me up and said I was a big sister. And then he's walking me through the hospital. He's holding my hand. Like we do. He's going to be so mad. I'm telling this story on the podcast. Um, he's holding my hand. Like we do, we get to the room and my dad lets go of my hand. So I stop like dead in the doorway and I watch him let go of my hand, walk into the room with my mother grab Alicia and they just look like a happy little family. And I was still in the doorway. And I remember being like, I hate her. (laughs) I don't know what that is over there, but I hate it. I don't like it (laughs) because all of a sudden all of the attention was off of me and it uh, never went back. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Well, then our mom told us a story where I think I've said this at one point on the podcast where she like is folding laundry or something and turns around and I was like in my car seat, car seat. I don't know. Something. I, or, I don't know. I don't know what you call Me. it. What's it called? Baby carrier? Uh, what are they called? Baby seat? Cradle? I don't know. <laughs> Swing. The hand one. I don't know. I actually, I don't even know. I was just there. I was chilling. A stationary baby seat. <laughs> I was chilling while my mom was folding socks or whatever. <laughs> and then she hears Ashley's little voice go, mom put her back where she came from and she turns around and Ashley had a little little tiny water gun and was squirting me <laughs> in the face and I was probably like <laughs> <laughs> the more that I talk to people I, apparently this is a really common thing yeah and there is a way that you are supposed to introduce siblings <laughs> no ever since you've I mean ever since the first time I heard that story if whenever if ever hopefully if ever I have two kids I will make sure that the sec- the oldest one is there the whole time experiencing it too. So they're yeah. not left out. Also, there's a way to introduce a newborn to your dog. Yes. It's the same thing. So like if you can't just bring something in and be like, this is a new part of our life. Like they were like, oh, if the, the dog is in your life, then let the dog like cuddle around the mom the entire time that she's mm-hmm. pregnant. And then once the baby's born, like if you can get a, a, blanket or a part of their clothing to the dog before the dog meets the baby. That way the dog can smell the baby before mm-hmm. meeting the dog. There's like so much that I never knew. Well, it's crazy. Think of Rosie. Yeah. If I was to have a kid You're right now, hers. no, like she gets p- like possessive over me with just anyone or any other dog or yeah. anything. Yeah. Like she would be so jealous, which Very. could be a huge problem in the future. So right? that's something I would have to for sure do. Yeah. It's crazy. How was that? The, oh, I was like, how was that the best day of your life? <laughs> I was like, how did we get on that? Um, oh, <laughs> I know. I was like, wait, what? I was like, was that the question? Best day of your life so far? Um, We're not the best, but one of the best. I don't know that it's the best, but you're going to laugh. Um, when we got to do that Disney day, <laughs> it was, it was one yes. of the, I don't think I'm a Disney adult because I don't relate to a lot of Disney adult content. But I love Disney and especially at this time, like Alicia and I had passes and we would go all the time. We got to go, we were with a network, um, we were with the Disney network Mm -hmm. um, through our channels and because Alicia had blown up at that time, um, we were able to have a VIP tour of Disney that ended with bench seats in the very front of the castle for the fireworks show and I sobbed. 
I have a, I have it on video. I can give it to you. I remember <laughs> for this clip. I'm literally like, I'm watching the fireworks happen and I just like am sobbing because I was so happy and I never in my life thought I would get to sit like in those seats. The preferred They're reserved VIP. for like the highest of celebrities or like make a wish kids. Like it's like the seat. The end of the fireworks show when, when Walt and Mickey hold hands and walk away. <laughs> sobbed. We sobbed. Sobbed. Oh, this is huge. <laughs> forever <laughs> stupid but i'm legit the whole day i just remember thinking and that's why i picked it like i just remember thinking i can't believe this is happening mm-hmm. i can't believe this is my life i can't believe this is happening also i think we're so so big with nostalgia yeah when i tell like <laughs> that's why i think i miss the house so much yeah i think that's why we feel things so deeply and even like disney like we remember growing up going all the time and yeah. like it is know, different for kids that like grew up going there yeah and i'm very adamant about my answer on this sorry if you don't agree but disneyland is so much better than disney world fight me in the comments it's fine hot take hot no it's not a hot take because it's a real take <laughs> hot takes are like oh i don't know this is controversial no truth take because that's the one that walt made okay mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. where the magic it's is the original the fun fact <laughs> fun fact um disneyland was originally gonna be in burbank next Mm -hmm. to the disneyland like you know disney studios Mm -hmm. thank god it's not could you imagine traffic oh it'd be so bad it's already bad bad. it would be so bad they chose anaheim walt had the idea this is why i I think this is why i'm obsessed with disney walt was up at griffith park watching his daughter on a little merry-go-round he was sitting on a bench the merry-go-round's still there the merry-go-round is still there okay and And the bench is still there no Oh, they took it. Mm-hmm. You're right. That, that was my whole I'm so thing. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my whole thing is ruined. Um, no, you're good. Um, that's when he had the idea to make Disneyland a world where kids could play and blah, 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 blah. Long story short, if you walk in Disneyland, if you're on Main Street, if you go into the right where there's a little museum, you will find a bench. Not just any bench. Not just any bench. It is the bench mm-hmm. where he thought and had a dream of making Disneyland. Like, if that isn't motivating... Like that is the most inspiring thing ever. Like he just had a thought and an idea. Like think of how many times we all have ideas and we just don't follow through with them. Yeah. How many times are people like, oh, so-and-so invented that. Well, I could have thought of that. Like that's easy. Yeah, but you didn't do it. Like yeah. th- there's action that's required. Like, like like he had it like, oh, that's so, that's where the magic is. It's at uh-huh. the bench. It's at the bench. Okay, that's my, that's my thing. <laughs> but that is a good, that, I would put that as one of my top 10 days in my life too. Yeah. That was a good I one. just remember being so happy. Um, I also had like five glasses of wine that dinner. So maybe that's why oh, I cried. We were, so, we were so happy. Um, when and where and who was your first kiss? Uh, ever? Like, I don't know. Whatever, whichever. Cause I specifically remember as a kid, I had a crush on our family friend's son named Jonathan and I played house oh, yes. in the backyard and made him be the husband so that I could kiss him. <laughs> and I kissed him. <laughs> sure and it was like, great. How old were you? I was little, little. Yeah. I think I was little, little. Okay, what was your like main I'm kiss guessing like that? six. I And then I didn't kiss a boy until I was like 18. Which is so funny because at the time you think that's so 18. late and it's not. Yeah. I, I mean, it felt like late to me because you had, you had a first kiss in high school and I didn't. I never kissed anyone in high school. Oh, I didn't I date so anyone bad. in high school. Um. So Yeah. That was a long, long break period of no kissing. But I, I even remember thinking it was so late for me to have my first kiss. I was a freshman in high school and I remember all my friends had had first kisses. Like my, one of my best friends had a boyfriend and like, mm-hmm. I just remember thinking, oh my God, I'm so late compared to my friends. Right. Which Imagine is so me. funny. Cause I was literally, I think I was 12. I, no, 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 I was 13. 13. I was 13. I was 13. The still I was 13. Yeah. Like that's, that is that's, when you that's typically fine. have your first kiss. Um, and it was this, it was this guy who, I remember he played guitar and I was like, oh my God, cause I'd be on the worship team and I played guitar. And I was like, oh my God, he thinks I'm so cute. Cause I play guitar. <laughs> um, I had my little like emo hair. Your guitar pick necklace. Guitar pick necklace. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember he was like, will you be my girlfriend? And I was like, hey, yeah. And I was like, okay, bye. And I went to lunch. <laughs> like, I, didn't, I was like, Can oh yeah. see you later. And then I remember at the end of the day, he was saying goodbye and I was like, okay, bye. And I gave him a hug. And then he like, pulled me into kiss and I felt like it was so awkward and I was just like oh my god and I hated it I was like uh, uh, I was like that just happened that just happened and then I was anxious for like a week and then I broke up with him in a week 
Poor Ian. I hope, no, actually, not I think too he's different married. from where you're at right now. I feel like you overthink a lot of things. Way to call me out, no. Ash. Me this morning venting to my trainer. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know. Um, anyways. <laughs> you just had your birthday. I did. I'm 30. I feel like a new woman. You're 30. Don't say it with no, that way. No, you are 30, which makes me so happy <laughs> because I've been in my 30s yeah. for a few years now, and I'm so excited to welcome you into the 30s club. Thank you. Are you dreading it? Are you excited? Like, what are your thoughts behind it? I know for me, when I turned 30, I remember the day before I turned 30, the night before, I journaled 30 things I hate about myself, 30 oh. things I love about myself, and then I journaled about... <laughs> My 20s in general. Wait. Because I was so scared about Ash, my 30s. I journaled one, the day before my 30th in Hawaii. Really? And I, I talked about it on like one of the recent episodes. Yes. Really? Yeah. I didn't say 30 things I hated about myself though. I just, <laughs> not necess- not hated, maybe that sounds harsh, but like that I wanted to change mm. about myself I would be that. a better way to put it. I love that. Um, I will say my whole life, even when it came to graduating high school, I feel like a lot of people were... Um, ready to get out they'd be like yeah I like I'm, I'm out of here or like whatever Me. um I remember I feel like every big monumental time of my life even moving out of our parents house I was like happy with the speed of everything you know with high school I remember thinking no like you have one more month enjoy this before you're never gonna have it have it again mm-hmm. same thing with college until I dropped out um same thing with moving out of my parents I wasn't like I can't wait to get out um, and I definitely, even though there were times I was like looking forward to it, I was, I felt very present. Um, I feel like hitting 30, this is the first time in my life that I'm kind of like, why do I not resonate with this? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah. oh, this feels like we like, but also I'm, I'm excited for it. I've always felt like I'm going to be my best version of myself in my thirties. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely not, I never thought I would be doing what I am in my third. Like right. I truly with all my heart thought I would have kids when I was 21. I mean, I thought I was, I would have like 2.5 kids by 28. How many kids do you want? 2.5. Why point five? <laughs> no, statistically <laughs> they say everyone, every couple has 2.5 kids. Do they uh, really? Yeah, it's just a number that <laughs> statistics say. Um, I always imagined two or three. I don't yeah. think I could have one child because I love the relationship that we have. So I definitely want to, mm-hmm. but then I've always wanted to adopt because my mom was adopted. Yeah. So I could very much, obviously my husband has a say in this too, but like I would love to have two kids and then adopt one. Yeah. Ideally. I love that. Yeah. That's always I been the plan. I w- would love mom to come on here one day and share her story. Cause her, oh, her <laughs> I hope you do that. And I hope everyone like pops some popcorn and pours himself a glass of wine for the story. It's a crazy story. When I tell you it could truly be an HBO Max series. A movie. Like a mo- like it a movie. It, like some like but if ever one day she feels comfortable for that, but like I it needs to be documented somewhere. It's incredible. Like it is insane. I really thought I've I listened to, I've listened to so many podcasts um about family stories and stuff like that and this one podcast that I listened to was actually really dark podcast where we don't want this for us but like (laughs) the mom did a memoir and she did a video like a audio tape memoir where she just like talked about her life story Mm -hmm. and the kids found out so much stuff because of it got intrigued dug more found out all this drama basically (coughs) and I'm not gonna (laughs) spoil it but like I really think mom should do that I don't want to tell her story but yeah no I agree I forget why I was going on oh how many kids um, yeah, I feel like we've always been open to adopting for that reason. Mm-hmm. Um, I am too. I definitely am. I, I would love two kids. Mm-hmm. I don't think I want any more than that, but who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Know. Maybe one day I'm gonna be like, bye YouTube. I'm gonna be, <laughs> I'm gonna be me with my eight kids. <laughs> I just can't see it. Me neither, but you never know. You never know. I would love if you, cause a lot of people listening are our age. Do mm-hmm. you have advice for anyone entering? Do you have advice for me entering my thirties or anyone else entering their thirties? I think, um, I think it's normal to feel scary going into your thirties. I think society puts a lot of pressures on how one should be, look, be at in a relationship or like in their careers by 30. I feel like all of that is just ridiculous. Um, the sooner you get that out of your head, the better. I think something that came to me when I turned 30 that I wasn't expecting was I'm very aware now of what my boundaries are. Hmm. Um, I'm not going to put myself in situations that I don't want to be in. And I no longer, 
um, put up with people in my life, friendships, whatever, that I feel like aren't also like helping me, you know, mm-hmm. if it's 50, 50, great. And, and I, I love being able to give more at times, but if I feel like I'm being like sucked dry, like that's, I'm not going to put up with it anymore. Like I'm, I feel like I'm very aware of what I want in a partner. I'm very aware of like what I'm going to do, um, and what makes me happy on a daily basis. And I make sure to do that. And I stopped saying yes to a lot of things just because I thought I had to. And I think all of that came with the age of 30 and I didn't think it was going to, and I wasn't expecting it, but I love it. Mm-hmm. It's great. I love that. Yeah. And, and like, no is an answer. Mm-hmm. I used to always say no. And then a paragraph as to why I couldn't make it oh, or whatever. Sorry, and busy. now I'm just no, like, sorry, no. sorry, I can't. Yeah. Like you don't need to um, I'll apologize if they really wanted me to come, but I'm not going to give excuses as to why I don't want to when that, I just simply don't want to. That's um, I've gotten so much better at that. I feel like years ago, I honestly would do such little white lies being like, mm-hmm. no, sorry, I can't. I have another appointment or yeah. something when I didn't. I just so didn't want to go. Where now yeah, it I'm, takes a lot of energy. Yeah, where now I definitely will just say, I'm so sorry. I would love to, but I'm exhausted and mm-hmm. I can't function right now or like whatever the truth is. Yeah. Um, like you don't need an excuse to say no to something. Yeah. And dating in my twenties versus my thirties in my twenties, I would just like kind of, I don't want to say conform, but I was definitely more of a chameleon with each guy that I went on a date with. Like I would very much look for and figure out what they were looking for in someone and kind of mimic it. Mm hmm which was just wasting my time. You're like, oh, I, you love a funny girl? I'm a comedian. Yeah, <laughs> me looking up jokes in the bathroom to like make him happy, you yeah. know, and it's so stupid. And I think um, something that I noticed in my 30s was I just became more and more me on dates mm-hmm. and stopped trying so hard on the first date. And if they vibed with me, cool. If not, bye. Like it, yeah. And I didn't take it personally. And I did this whole um, episode on my podcast about uh, dating and how I learned in my thirties to like not take it personally Mm. because in the end dating is kind of like, it sounds so silly, but like, it's like a business transaction. Mm. If it's going to work, it's going to work. It has nothing to do with you. Mm. It has nothing to do with me. If we're going to click, we'll click. And if we won't, we won't. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to like figure that out on the first date. Even like friends. Same with anyone. Yeah. Like even even, career moves. Like if it vibes and it clicks and it works, awesome. If it doesn't, it's nothing to do with you. It's not personal. Yeah. You're just not meant for each other. Yeah. You won't work out. Like life with them would be really hard and you're doing yourself a favor by figuring that out on the first date. I think something I've realized too, again, probably growing up from that, like uh, you know, in just a very religious environment where it's like you have your one true partner in life or whatever. Yeah. I feel like now I've really, really realized how you can have, you can marry multiple, like there's multiple people in the world you can't have a future with. Mm-hmm. Like there's just going to be certain hardships in one versus another, or there's exactly. going to be different hardships in either one or whatever. Like, like you have more free will to choose versus yeah. like, oh, I have to go find that one person where it's like, no, you know, I could meet someone tomorrow and be like, wow, I can, I can see a future with you. Versus I could also like, it's, it's less about there's that one perfect person yeah. and more about, um, can you do life together? Can, yeah. And, and there's multiple people where it could work. And there's mm-hmm. also multiple people where like, maybe it would work, but it'll only be okay. Mm-hmm. And then there's a whole bunch of people where it's like red flags, you better run, you know? Yeah. I was having this conversation with my co-host on my podcast who she very much believes there's like, you have one, like a true love. There mm-hmm. is a true love out there. And I'm not going to take that away from her. She believes that that's great. I personally have found the same thing. Like I, I don't think there is such thing as one true love. I think that's something that back to Disney, (laughs) I think that's something that maybe the church, but a lot of like fictional movies and TV shows, especially little kid TV shows depict is this like one true love moment. And if you miss it, it's gone and you're like miserable forever. And that's so not the case. I really do believe that, um, there are multiple people in this world that you can click with, that you can do life with. And I think there might be better ones and there might be like okay ones, but you can click with multiple people. I think there's, I definitely, I used to not believe this, but I definitely now believe you can have different soulmates Mm -hmm. in life. Um, also, my opinion could literally change in a year. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I find she someone, meets her soulmate tomorrow. Maybe I meet like, my soulmate and I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, I've never experienced. Uh, you know, versus other than like your first love type of love, right, like yeah. maybe I just haven't experienced that and I don't know. But like at the same time, I do think because I remember my first time questioning that was when our great aunt, who was kind of like a grandma, she was a widow, 
And I remember when she remarried, that was the first time I was like, okay, so is that not like her love too? Like mm-hmm. I remember being confused. And then I was like, well, why is it just okay? Because she was a widow. So then she can find love again. Like yeah. that doesn't make sense. Like I remember being kind of confused by that. I do think there's certain people who like, even when they're gone or if you break up or if they pass away, like they'll never leave you. Like, right. and I do believe that that's why they're a soulmate, but I don't think that means you can only have one and then they're it's gone forever. Yeah. I remember, um, one of our uncles, his wife passed away yes. and that's when I had my moment where mm. I was like, he, um, later remarried mm-hmm. and I'm so happy for him. Yeah. Like he, I really like her. He, you know, he mourned, he had his beautiful life with his wife, took that season to like mourn his loss, obviously, and still loves her to this day, but found well, love again for his, the rest of his life here. And his on new Earth. wife was never trying to replace her right. and was aware of that. And I think that's such a beautiful thing. So I just struggle when people say there is only one true love. Yeah. Because I do think you can have multiple soul a mates. And percent. I do believe God puts different people in your life for for different reasons. That, you know, like now he met someone to still like you're still meant to have a companion in life, you know, a thousand percent. And I don't think just because you lost your partner doesn't mean that you have to go through the rest of your life alone. Yeah. You know, that's not fair. Yeah. That's not or if loving. you, if that's, if you choose to, that's fine too. But if you want to fine. Yeah. yeah. So I don't, again, maybe my opinion will change when I like me. I'm like, Oh, there's so many. <laughs> <y'all. laughs> I love what you love. Um, anyways, but I know, uh, this is, I loved this episode. Yeah, this is fun. I I'm loved like, this. This is not what I thought we were going to talk about, but also love that we're talking about all of this. No, I know we did kind of a bad job doing rapid fire, but at the <laughs> same time, this was even better. I agree. Um, but shout yourself out. Where can people subscribe to the podcast? Oh my gosh. Uh, the podcast is unsolicited advice. It's with me and my bestie Taryn. Um, you can write in all your stories and we'll give you our unprofessional advice on it, which is so much fun. Um, and then YouTube is XO Miss Ashley Nicole. And then on socials, it's Ash Nicole on everything. And it's Nicole with an H. And she's been killing the moving vlogs. So been killing the moving vlogs. I am also, I feel like on a TikTok roll. So go follow me there. Um, anyways, would love to have you back sometime. Please. (laughs) We can discuss more church trauma (laughs) and (laughs) thirties. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to pretty basic rate us five stars. It really helps our pod out here. And, um, I love you so much and you will see Remy next week. Don't you worry. Bye guys.